Hey everyone, Bailey here. We've got another STEM Sunday for you. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about space stuff, what's going on in the industry right now. Um, but first, I wanted to say thank you guys so much. Um, we had a really amazing time learning the first three steps of solving a Rubik's Cube, and then a bunch of you guys said, Bailey, I got this. I'm gonna go figure out how to do the rest, and that's exactly what I wanted you to do. So I'm so proud of everyone who took those three steps and continued um, and learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube this month. So congrats to you. I'm really proud of you. So space news, what's going on, right? Um, one of the big announcements that happened this last month was that NASA announced that we are going back to Venus. Venus, right? What a cool place. It's like the like Earth's closest neighbor, right? Like it's just hanging out right there. Um, and Venus is actually one of my favorite planets, so this is really exciting for me. We haven't been to Venus since, well, last century. It's been a while since uh, NASA at least has visited Venus. So we are sending two missions to Venus. Um, the first one is Da Vinci Plus, and this one is going to be studying, uh, it's like, they're both robotic missions, so don't freak out too much. There's no humans going to Venus. But Da Vinci Plus is going to be focusing on, um, like, the chemistry of Venus. So it's got the atmospheric aspect, understanding the gases, the chemistry in the atmosphere of Venus. And the other one is going to be um, Veritas. And this one is going to be doing the ground, the mapping of the surface, uh, analyzing the geology, uh, really understanding these two aspects that makes Venus the planet it is today, the ground and the air. And this is really cool because, well, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. And a lot of people get confused by that because Mercury is closer to the sun, so you would think that that one would be hotter. But actually, Venus has um, some pretty extreme examples of climate, like the, of the greenhouse gases that we see, and we're seeing them here on Earth. And basically what happened is all these gases are being trapped, and now it is the hottest planet uh, in the solar system. And as I mentioned, this is happening here on Earth. So understanding Venus could really help us unlock um, the climate crisis that we're seeing. And so hopefully we can get some answers there. I'm really excited to see us go back to Venus. The other huge announcement, like shout it from the rooftops huge, is ESA is now uh, going to put together another astronaut crew. And this is so exciting. ESA is the European Space Agency. Um, for those that don't know, it's basically NASA, but NASA's for the US and ESA's for um, Europe. Like all of Europe, all the European countries come together and form ESA and it's really exciting. And ESA, ex they had over 22,000 people apply to be an astronaut um, for ESA. And I think that's just so exciting. And this is the best part. That's, that's not even the best part, guys. The best part is ESA announced that they will be selecting the first ever disabled astronaut. Like, just let that sink in for a second. Space is really, really difficult, and so oftentimes we pick at the top of the line, most fit, most healthy people to go to space. Um, so that, you know, if there's an issue, we don't have to worry about it. It's not that time anymore, um, because it leaves out a lot of people when we do that. It leaves out the disabled community of brilliant minds, um, capable people who aren't giving the opportunity to go to space. And Issa said, you know what? We're gonna change that. We are going to work to figure out how to make space a safe place for everyone, including the disabled community. And this is just so exciting to see. Um, I can't wait to see who they select from this community to go up into space. This is gonna be groundbreaking and historic. I'm so excited to see it. And this is very timely because July 26th is National Disabled um, Independence Day, Disabilities Independence Day. So this is really cool to see all of this kind of coming together to really support this community. Um, so I, I just, I love it. I can't, I can't put enough good words to it. It's, it's really great to see. So we've got July 26th coming up. That's really exciting, but we have some other dates. Um, one is <laughs> July 2nd, uh, which I know has already passed, but that's uh, World UFO Day. So, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love talking about UFOs? Um, they're un unidentified and flying objects, so uh, odds are we're gonna have a lot of UFOs. It doesn't necessarily mean they're aliens or little green Martians or whatever, um, but we definitely have UFOs, and so we're gonna celebrate that. That's July 2nd, we celebrated that. Um, what else do we have this month? We have July 20th, one of my favorite dates. I love this date um, because it is actually the anniversary of Apollo 11 moon landing. You know, where like Neil Armstrong got out of the capsule, he went down the ladder and he's like, that's one small step for man, because I have to breathe. One giant leap for mankind and everyone in the world was like watching, they're just tuned into their TVs of like watching humans walk on the moon and that's amazing so that happened 52 years ago as of july 20th it's a good anniversary to remember that um so we got neil and buzz aldrin they were hanging out on the moon there's actually one guy 
He was hanging up in the capsule, orbiting the moon, making sure that they were safe. So he went to the moon, but didn't go down to the surface. His name is Michael Collins. Um, he's an amazing astronaut, funny, smart, very humble guy. And uh, this is another very timely thing because he actually passed away earlier this year. He obviously lived a long life, very happy, very healthy man, um, really changed the world. But this is a good time to remember him for all the amazing things he did. Um, so that's a cool one. Also on July 20th, one of the reasons it was selected, Blue Origin is going to send humans into space on their first crewed mission. This is super exciting to see, um, and I love it so much. Um, so they're actually going to be sending people in their rocket capsule, everything up into suborbital space, including owner Jeff Bezos. We have a lot of billionaires out there running space companies, and it looks like Jeff Bezos is going to be the first one of those billionaires to actually go to space on his own rocket. So it's another exciting thing happening in the industry. Whew, okay, guys, it was a big month. We've got a big month ahead of us. So much stuff is going on. Um, I think I'm going to have a big month, too. Don't tell anyone, but I, I think I've got some stuff I'm going to be able to announce pretty soon, and I'm really excited to hear that, um, to say that, I guess. And obviously, we've got a lot going on in the space world, so just wanted to say thank you guys for hanging out with me for another STEM Sunday, and as always, keep cubing, guys. Bye.